Hello students, today I want to talk about the great, well-known and most famous Indo-Anglian poet, writer, thinker, philosopher, philologist A.K. Ramanujan. When discussing the works of Indo-Anglian writers, it is often argued that they are more interested in the foreign audience than the Indian ones. And instead of presenting a true image of India, they give a kind of image that the West wants or expects. Like they write about cobras, about sadhus, about rock dancers, about sacred cows, superstitions and corruption. This accusation is only partly true. In fact, Indo-Anglian literature derives from an all India consciousness and in turn promotes this consciousness. It projects a total vision of India, interpreting its aspirations, its hopes, disappointments, fears, not only before the outside world, but also before the diverse linguistic groups within the country and thereby promoting, they promote a sense of national unity. Attipate Krishna Swami Ramanujan, popularly known as A.K. Ramanujan, was an Indian poet and scholar of Indian literature who wrote both in English and Kannada. Ramanujan was a poet, a scholar, a professor, a philologist, a folklorist, a translator, a playwright, and what not. Ramanujan worked as a lecturer in English at Kilon and Bel Belgaum from 1962 when he joined the University of Chicago as an assistant professor till his death in July 1993. He lived in the US. Apart from working at the University of Chicago, he taught at other U.S. universities as well, including Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, California at Berkeley, Carleton College, etc. He lived almost 30 years of his life in the U.S. Yet his Indian experience is repeatedly featured in his words and is often precisely recreated in his original setting of a Hindu outlook. Surely his poetry is Indian in sensibility and content as it is rooted in and stems from the Indian environment, reflecting Indian mores and ethos often ironically. It is through irony that the poet comes to grips with the essential ambivalence of the Indian situation. Now, I will talk about Ramanujan and the Indian past present in his poetry. Ramanujan was a voluntary exile from India. He cut himself off from his immediate natural environment, physical environment, but this was again not a loss for him. He looked at India and its past from across the Atlantic, which sharpened his sensibilities. The secret of his success lies in his not disowning Indian inheritance and not falling prey to the feeling of alienation, despite his long sojourn abroad. As I told you, he lived in the US for a very long time. His poetry expresses an Indian sensibility sharpened by his Western education. As he himself says, I quote, My first 30 years in India, 
my frequent visits and field trips, my personal and professional preoccupations with Kannada, the classic and folklore give me my substance, my inner forms, images and symbols." Uncut. Thus Ramanujan finds his roots in Indian myth and traditions and that is why his separation from his immediate Indian environment has proved to be a blessing for him because it has enabled him to identify himself with the Indian historical traditions. One can always note the presence of the past in his poetry. He has the conviction that the future cannot be built out of an unhistoric past. Often we see that uh, there is no fond admiration of the past in his poetry. It is said that distance lends enchantment to the view. Usually uh, the migrants, the exiles look at their native society with fond sentimental and critical love. Ramanujam himself was an expatriate. So such expatriates, the exiles, they tend to glorify even what is decadent in their native culture. This is not the case with Ramanujan. He is acutely alive to the rotten social milieu of contemporary India. His poetry reflects the predicament of one who is inseparably attached to the traditional past of his native land. And at the same time, can't turn blind to various ugly forms of its myth, its rituals, its literatures. Like Neeraj C. Chaudhary, Ramanujan looks at the Indian past and present with an objective and critical eye. The poem River is a good example where he blames the ancient and modern Indian poets for their indifference to human suffering and fascination for the sensational and romantic only. He goes so far to say, I caught, I must seek and will find my particular hell only in my mind. Uncaught. His poem Prayer to Lord Murugan is a classical example of his hatred for the decadent present of India. He is a poet of stark, demythicized Indian present. His translations from Kannada and Tamil are expressions of his quest for identity which he can find neither in foreign environment nor in the immediate social milieu, but which he hopes to find in the literary past of his country. He finds something worthwhile in Indian myths and traditions which have grown sterile in the present. He describes India as the ancient chaos of a country. Individual and collective nostalgia in his poetry. The linking of the familial exp experience with the historical consciousness is a feature which runs through his poetry. Ramanujan with his tragic vision is able to revoke the recurring pattern of historical tragedy and individual suffering. He turns the poetry of reverie into the poetry of immediacy and establishes a pattern of permanence in a flux of individual experience. The strong nostalgic knot, which is such a prominent feature of Ramanujan's poetry, does not portray the nostalgia 
of the individual for times past and things gone. It is a collective nostalgia of the whole people who look back to the past with love and hate at once, at once drawn towards it and propelled by it. Now let's talk about the familial figures and objects in his poetry. Ramanujan's poetry is rooted in the family. He remembers nostalgically the various members of the family as well as the various objects connected with his early life in India. His interior landscape is peopled with the host of family and family figures and objects. His poetry shows how an Indian poet in England can derive strength from going back to his roots. In poem after poem, Ramanujan goes back to his childhood experiences, recollected in an alien land. These memories and experiences indelibly printed in his mind, in the mind of a sensitive child, now pulsate into life. The poet's self is a theatre in which are staged hosts of incidents from the past and across which move a number of characters like his grandparents, his mother, his father, his, his, his cousins, his wife, etc. Love poem for a wife first stages a powerful psychic drama through a you and I conflict. There is a crisscross of memories which reveal the poet's yearning for emotional fulfillment in family relationship. Thus, family is one of the controlling metaphors in Ramanujan's poetry. The figures of his father and the figures of, figure of his mother dominate his interior landscape. Ramanujan's poetry is rich with imagery. So now I will talk about imagery in Ramanujan's poetry. Ramanujan has an eye for the specific and accurate shape of an object or situation which he reveals with telling details. So there are concrete images in his poetry. His account of people, places, Objects, scenes, etc. are remarkable for its precision and fidelity to truth. This precision and accuracy is achieved by his vivid visual imagery. His poetry is image oriented. He prefers the concrete and the precise as against the vague and the abstract. His images are drawn from the common Indian scenes and sights. His poem, A River, is a cluster of images drawn from the Indian countryside. Now let's talk about diction in his poetry. Ramanujan is a craftsman who revises and re-revises what he writes till perfection is achieved. One striking quality of his diction is the use of common monosyllabic words like the following line he uses. In this line he uses monosyllabic words. I quote, City of temples and poets who sang of cities and temples. Unquote. Secondly, he uses extreme economy of language, achieving a terseness and condensation of his own. His diction has a classical simplicity, austerity and perfection. His epigrammatic terseness like the ancient chaos of a country. My particular hell in my Hindu mind, etc. These lines need no comment. By using cold and prosaic words, he achieves an effect of irony. Often uses cliché and slangs 
to achieve unexpected effects. We see verbal irony also in his poems. Verbal irony is an important aspect of his diction. Like in his poem Obituary, the tone is flippant and mock ironic. He writes about his father's legacy in a light, humorous way. But it is merely a cover to hide the poignancy of his grief. He says that his father did many things, but he did not actually do them. Rather, they happened with him. For example, his birth through a caesarean operation in a slum and death by a heart failure in the fruit market. The sensitive readers don't fail to see his grief and deep love for his father, which he tries to hide. Now let's talk about versification in his poems. Like most new Indian English poets, Ramanujan uses the short line, sometimes even as short as one or two syllables. Often his sentences break off abruptly, leaving the reader to complete the sense. No doubt he uses free verse, but musical effect is created by the use of internal rhyme, internal rhythm and assonance. His work bears the impression of all great poetry, turning the ephemeral into the permanent, the individual into the universe, bringing out the predicament of a whole society in verse which is at the same time charged with emotion and has the detachment of great art. Ramanujan is a product of a specific culture. And his real greatness lies in his ability to translate his experience into the terms of another culture. After discussing general characteristics about his poems, I wish to talk about a river, which is a very well-known, very famous poem by A.K. Ramanujan. Though since 1962 Ramanujan was at the University of Chicago where he worked as a professor of Dravidian studies and linguistics, he looked across the Atlantic to the Indian past for his poetic inspiration. The memories of his past life in India as a child the large Indian families, the Indian landscape, the temples, the cities, his ancestors, all these are the recurrent themes of his poetry. However, he has little sentimental nostalgic fondness for things Indian. As a great artist, he retains his detachment and objectivity. A river is a dig at the Poets who sing only of the events that tickle them, the most unmindful of what it means to others. Poetry is nothing but a form of self-indulgence to these poets. The reverse celebrated in the poem is the Vaikai river, which flows through Madurai, a city that has for about 2000 years been the seat of Tamil culture. As an evocation to the river, the poem succeeds admirably. The river dries to a trickle every summer, bearing the sand ribs, straw, a woman's hair, etc. etc. In the dried riverbed, the wet stones glistening like sleepy crocodiles, and the dry ones look like shaven water buffaloes laughing in the sun. However, the poet never writes about the dry rivers. The ancient uh, Indian poets always sing only of the floods. Everybody in Madurai 
talks of the rising water level in the river oblivious of the fact that the floods have carried off three village houses one pregnant woman and a couple of cows named gopi and brinda the poets still sing about rivers but following the old traditions of ancient poets they sing only of floods unmindful of the devastations brought about by the flooding rivers now let's talk about um, irony and satire in his poems ramanujan satirizes the apathy and indifference of the poets ancient and modern to human suffering the poets are unconcerned with the pregnant women drowned which perhaps with perhaps uh, twins in her kicking at blank walls even before birth ramanujan's satiric vein is obvious from the very first line the casual tone of the poet makes the irony all the more pungent and sharp by his flippant tone he heightens the effect of pathos now i want to talk about his next uh, uh, popular poem obituary apparently the poem is written in a flippant and mock ironic tone but throughout the lines we find a moving undercurrent of deep pathos ramanujan accomplishes a pathetic effect with his non serious or casual style which no high sounding words or equivalent phrases could have accomplished take for example the legacy he left he means his father i caught father when he passed on left dust on a table full of papers left dates and daughters a bed wetting grandson uncaught the poet brings out the futility of our worldly personalities and the emptiness of our mundane existence in these lines um i caught being the burning type he his father he burnt properly at the cremation uncaught ultimately what does a man leave behind only several spinal discs so in this way uh, he sometimes ironically suggests the 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 transience of human life he talks about human predicament in his poems even in this poem which i am discussing uh, the obituary we see human predicament the poem confronts us with a puzzling philosophical problem that is whether man is a doer or a sufferer whether he does things for uh, himself or things happen to him are we really helpless placed in a hopeless predicament where we cannot choose anything again i quote some lines from the same poem everything he didn't quite manage to do himself like his cesarean birth in a brahmin ghetto and his death by heart failure in the fruit market see the human predicament in this poem his father did not die intentionally in the fruit market he happened to die so the 
here in these lines the poet only suggests things the shortness of life the transience of life i hope you enjoyed the lecture and um, i will discuss many more anglo indian poets